Answering distress calls can be dangerous to your health. Here's your look at the Hyatt Toys Alien Cane Face Hugger Attack Exquisite Mini. Exquisite Mini is a new standard setting series for 118th scale, featuring super articulation action figures under Hyatt Toys. Insisting I'm sure it's just a case of bad indigestion, let's get a closer look at Kane. It's not indigestion, by the way. I hate to break it to you. We're going to grab the ruler, though. Put it right to the very top of the figure's head. Kane face hugger attack. It's not indigestion. It's four and a half inches in height or about 11 and a half centimeters tall. A big thank you to the folks over at Hyatt Toys that provided this sample of Kane that we could have a look at in this video. Bringing in some of the other figures that we've already had a look at. Here he is next to the big chap. Still a big chap. Not as big as he probably could be by scale, but at least he's bigger than the other figures. And speaking again of other figures, I can bring in Ellen Ripley also in her spacesuit so that you guys can see like body wise, they're not that much different from one another. But to be fair as well, Ripley's outfit, other than just being white, still had the same stock design as the other space suits that the rest of the crew of Nostromo had in the film as well. For the figure's accessories, starting things off first, we're going to have a look at the display stand. It is, yes, the same display stand we've gotten with all the other alien figures before. One singular peg and attaches the same way if you are new to the idea of collecting Hyatt toys. Let me just give you a refresher on this. Located on the bottom, there's slots. See, there's two, there's two, two, two. To come included with these, you get these eye brackets. Apologies to anybody that has already known this. Know the drill by now. I'm just going to, again, give a refresher to new people here. But you take these eye brackets and you fit them in between. Some of these are a little tighter, but you fit them in between like this. And then essentially you just take another display stand that comes included with another exquisite mini and you can add on to the display stands. I have been mentioned, but it has been mentioned before. I maybe talk a little bit too much about these display stands, but I think it's ingenious. I think the, I like the idea that you can't interlock them and you don't have to necessarily be confined to the idea of using alien display stands. You can easily use the display stands that also came included with like the predators, for example, we're going to move those to the side, put that to the side. The figure also comes included with this flashlight. The flashlight is nice and small in size. You can see it doesn't look like it's the most illuminated. I'm guessing maybe the bulb is starting to die out. It does have the strap on the top, of course, that you can carry around in his hand. And like in the film, go ahead and pick the figure up. I don't know why I felt like the figure was so far away from me. You can take this and you sort of can feed this through the little loop. It's not as big as it probably could be, so that it can actually accommodate it. But I think most people are probably going to just decide to display cane, I think, with the flashlight rather than actually holstering on the side. Because I, I just feel like the size of that, that's probably going to break if you're trying to force that through. You'll be happy to know as well, the figure comes with some swappable hands. I mean, really, the flat hands that he has right now does the job of easily just holding the flashlight. You can kind of slot the hand underneath. I even had it at the beginning of this review where I just had it resting really on the hand and you can have it displayed like this. But if you'd actually like to go the full distance, go the extra mile of having him displayed properly, then yes, the figure also comes included with a couple of gripping hands. We'll go ahead and grab those right now. These gripping hands, I'm going to show you one of them. This is actually just more of a closed fist, but the one, the true one, the one that does all the work is this one right here. Uh, you can see like this one doesn't really pry away from the palm. This one does have the necessary space needed to hold in the flashlight. You just take the flashlight and fit it in between the hand like that. If again, you wanted to have Kane properly, properly, don't just phone this in. If you want to have him properly holding the flashlight, then you can actually do it that way. Let's put those to the side. And then for Kane himself, of course, he's pretty much got the same suit as what Ripley would have just to kind of prove that bring in the originally looked at Ripley. Helmets are a little bit different. But I mean, like, if you look at the bodies, the bodies aren't that much different in design and style. I mean, of course, Ripley's was more the stark white. Kane has more afforded colors. He's got some nice beiges, some nice browns, some additional oxidized, rusted parts to his, his helmets or to his shoulders and his helmet. And of course, the front piece there as well has a nice additional green that they've added in there as well. Backpacks look to be identical. The hose attachment also attaches to the back the exact same way. Whereas again, Ripley didn't have as much color going for her. Uh, Kane definitely does have a lot more of it. I'm going to put her to the side for the right now. Being that this one is also considered or referenced on the packaging as face hugger attack, you could kind of already know the fate of poor Kane. Smashed into the front of the dome, as you can see, is already the implanted face hugger or what the face hugger will be implanting into his mouth. 
I like the way that they've shattered the glass. It's not cracked in the sense that it actually looks like it's just punctured its way straight through it. And it does give you a great look to it. Now, you can technically remove the helmet. I prefer myself to have it displayed like this, but if you did want to display it without the helmet, just take it, it consists of two halves. You just take this top half off. A quick look at the helmet itself. Really like that oxidized coloring that they've added to it. That little bit of green definitely goes a long way for me, but we're going to put that to the side. And then you got the face hugger actually latched onto the front of Kane's face. You can't see Kane's face, but you got to believe he's pretty freaked out underneath all of this. You can go ahead then. You can also take the head off. Um, or this part of the helmet off. Just make sure it's detached from the back because you don't want to rip that away from the backpack that's on his back. And then sort of hold on to his face and hold on to this part as you remove everything from his body. I know we've already done this when we looked at Ripley. You can go ahead then and pop this straight through. And go ahead and just put that to the side because you don't want to lose that. And then you can take then the head and just put it back onto the ball joint. And like in the case of Ripley... Well, first of all, Kane is a little more believable, but you don't have to get a likeness down necessarily. It's literally just somebody wearing a hooded hat and then the latched on face hugger on the front of it. So the likeness doesn't have to be 100% sold, but at least it gives you the idea of what Kane would have looked like in the movie, right down to the idea that they've actually got the Kane with the face hugger wrapped around its tail, around its neck. Uh, you still get the posability, which is one thing that will benefit from actually taking the helmet off. You wouldn't be able to do this, what I'm doing right now, with the helmet already in place. Love the look of it, and I really appreciate the fact that they would have taken the time. Just move that out of the way so you can see the back of it. Look at those latched-on tendrils, those little side legs of the facehugger. It's just a scary idea. The idea that this creature would be latching on your face and you have... There's nothing, nothing at all you can actually do about it. But the fact that they made it in such a way that you'd be able to remove the helmet and still be able to appreciate everything that's going on underneath, it's sort of like a hidden Easter egg. Funny enough that I'm talking about hidden Easter eggs. Those are eggs I'm not going to want to track down and find myself. I really like that. I really think they've done such a great job of it, especially the fact that you can see the tail completely wrapped all the way around its neck. I'm going to leave it off for the time being. We'll go back, probably put in a helmet on in a second. As again, for the rest of his body, some nice use of additional colors, that sort of mustard yellow that they've added, some beiges, some browns. It still has the limitations in articulation that we would have already discussed with Ripley. Because again, like he's so padded here with the spacesuit, it really completely eliminates any elbow articulation, which is fine. I'm not bothered by that. You still have the swivel here, and that's more than enough for me. I mean, you can swivel not only here, you can also swivel in the hand. Any bit of elbow bend, if they have to unfortunately sacrifice it at the expense of getting actually the sculpting of the body down right, I don't mind at all, again, the fact that they don't, they don't put any elbow articulation. Getting a closer look at the back, so again, you can see the detail and the paint that they put into the backpack, the little valves there, the little buttons and switches and lights, all colored in nicely, and a real nice dark copper color that they've used, and oxidizing with the additional little bit of grayish green. Boy, that's, those are nice touches. I really like that. Here's what the back of his legs look like. Unlike the arms, at least his legs do have knee articulation, so you can bend those back so you can actually have him looking like he's running for dear life. I think by now, though, he's probably not going to be running much of anything. He's just going to be collapsing. Luckily, for the alien at least, not a good idea for Nostromo, they bring him on board. And then from there, I don't want to say hilarity ensues. Hilarity doesn't ensue. Looking, though, at the articulation here on Kane, we're going to go ahead and keep the helmet off because it allows me at least to get, get access to that ball joint. His head isn't a ball joint. It's a little more limited because he does have the tail wrapped down at the bottom of his neck, but you can at least move this up and down, back and forth this way. And yeah, you can wrap the head all the way around, rotate the head all the way around. The arms do come out. Uh, these shoulders, by the way, are attached here, and it looks like they're also attached just a little underneath the shoulder area. It looks like there's just a little bit of glue. I mean, you can kind of move the arms out, no problem, no worries, other than really the fact that Right here is where it's attached to the collar piece. I mean, and it's only attached by just such a little thin, thin strand of plastic. I wouldn't want to fight that up too much. And I wouldn't probably even want to keep his arms up like this, other than looking like the like Kane really wants to surrender. I would be surrendering too. You take the arms, you can bring them forward, you can bring them back. At least, it, like I said, it's attached up here and it's not attached to like the bicep area, which really would eliminate any opportunity to be able to do this, for example. Uh, the arms do swivel, as we already discussed. The hands also can rotate all the way around. The figure has an upper torso ball joint. Let's bring his arms down here for a second. His upper torso is on a ball joint. Legs split out. You can bring the legs forward. And, you, of course, you can bring the legs back. Nice swivel at the top of the thigh. Single hinge on the knee. And, again, that's as far of a reach that you can actually get with the knees. 
I'm, I'm, I'm not upset by that. I mean, again, just the, si the sizing of his body anyways is, yes, yeah, going to eliminate a little bit of articulation. Bend at the knee, rotate the lower leg, and then when it comes to his feet, you can technically rotate them really all the way around. You can move them up and down this way, and there's an ankle pivot too. Appreciate, though, the idea that Hyatt Toys not only give us smaller scale alien figures, sort of the thing I really wish we could have had, like if I was collecting alien figures back in the day, like back in the high school days when I was really into alien films, I would have just jumped for the chance of getting collectibles like this. First of all, they don't take up much space at all. Let's just again bring in Ellen Ripley here again. But the attention to detail on both of these figures for considering that they're actually considering that they're actually four inches in height. It's just incredible. The fact that high toys managed to put so much detailing on these figures. Ripley, I think is going to give me a little bit of problems standing here again, just because she's going to be a little bit top heavy. She still has her helmet on after all and protected from face hugger attack. And the idea going back to the idea of mentioning the helmets, the idea that Hyatt Toys goes to the extent of sculpting the head complete so that if you did want to remove the helmet, top and bottom parts, you're actually treated to a fully sculpted face underneath. Or in Kane's case, not so much a face, a face hugger, but the amount of detail that they put into this figure, while still utilizing, yes, the same mold as Ripley, you get yourself a really nice looking Kane to be putting on display. Not really sure if this was a point I mentioned in the review of Ellen Ripley in Spacesuit, but I'll certainly mention it here in the review of Kane and his. I love the idea that we're finally getting human characters that can go along with the aliens from pr produced by High Toys. Nobody would be wrong by saying that this is the first time, granted, that we have gotten human characters. We did get ourselves a whole bunch of stock colonial marines before, but I feel more attached to the ones that are connected to the film verse. Speaking of attached and speaking to connected, two good segues to tie into the idea that Kane, yes, very visibly, it does have a face hugger currently wrapped around his face. One thing that benefits at least Kane of a very short list that currently is benefiting Kane, but one at least is that you don't have to have the likeness there as much because he does have the face hugger on his face. Ripley, because you did take the helmet off and fully visible face, you could sort of spot that maybe the likeness wasn't as much there for Sig Sigourney Weaver. Looked a little bit more like maybe Courtney Cox. Kane can hide a lot of it because he does have the face hugger over top of his face. And the idea that attention to detail is put in there by High Toys, the, to the very idea that you can remove the helmet if you want to, it's not attached to the figure's body. Taking it off completely reveals a fully sculpted, fully painted, and well-executed head sculpt of Kane that's underneath the helmet. So you can decide for yourself if you want to display Kane with the, with, helmet, with the helmet or without the helmet. In either case, Kane's having a really tough day. Big thank you. Big thank you to the folks over at Hyatt Toys that did provide the sample of Kane Face Hugger Attack. The name says it all as of what ordeal he's currently dealing with right now. But we had a look at the of Kane facehugger attack in this review. If you guys did want to go back, by the way, and check out my other high toys reviews at the very end of this video, popping up will be a playlist covering off the territory of all the high toys that I've looked at in the previous years, as well as all the future high toys stuff will be popping up on that very same playlist. Speaking of popping up on the playlist and popping up onto this channel shortly, if you hit that subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification, you're going to get those friendly reminders of when the new, the next, the upcoming High Toys reviews will be coming shortly, as we are going to be, yes, looking at Lambert, looking at Dallas, both in their spacesuits, as well as a bunch of other alien predator figures produced by High Toys as well. Lots of stuff coming your way, guys. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.